Next up, uh, this one came across the radar as well. It is some, it, it, it's related to the topic that we just did, but it's not exactly the same. So uh, we've referenced the We in Miami podcast on this channel before. Um, it provides us with a lot of content, uh, just like Kevin Samuels used to, uh, just like, you know, other content creators like Fresh and Fit and all of that kind of stuff. This is just another along those lines. The We in Miami podcast. They had some woman on there. Uh, I don't, the identity of this woman is not important. What's more important is what she had to say. Um, so she basically puts the rapper Sway Lee on blast. So for anyone who doesn't know who Sway Lee is, he's one half of the rap group Ray Shrimmer. Um, and, uh, you know, he's one of these guys. He's, he's one of these rappers who lives the rapper type lifestyle, apparently, you know, slowing it up with, you know, those types of women. He he gets with the types of women who were in the previous clip that we just talked about. Those are the types of women that a guy like Swat Sway Lee gets with. Um, you know, he's from the, the future Drake school of thought. Um, and so uh, this woman was on the We in Miami podcast. They asked her about whether she had hooked up with any famous people. And, um, you know, this was what she had to say. Have y'all ever known that celebrity? Definitely. Definitely. Who? Have, Have y'all ever smashed a celebrity? Definitely. Who? Sway Lee. Oh, oh shit. shit! Shout out to Sway Lee. Hey, That's right. Shout out to Sway Lee. Right. 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 boy. The experience wasn't like great. It wasn't the vibe. I like wasn't really into it. It wasn't nothing special. I'm gonna be honest with you. For me, it was it was a no for me. It was a no. No, I had a good day. And for me, that wasn't it. I'm like, no, actually, you pay me for for that whack ass. Like when the, when the dick is big, your mouth is, but like my shoulder. Like, <laughs> oh, oh so shit, my boy Sway Lee. Damn. I don't care. I said what I said. He can have beef with you after this. I don't care. He can have beef with you. I'm not worried about nothing. Mm. She ain't worried about nothing. Uh, it's a shrimp cocktail. That was what she uh, described his situation as. Shrimp cocktail. So uh, I, <laughs> the, 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 the only thing that I wanted to get, the only the, the first thing I guess that I wanted to say about this was I just want to make sure we keep that same energy mm -hmm. uh, because, and this isn't the first time I've seen this. So way, you know, back in the day, you know, the, 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 the OG mega dots, people like Jenna Shea, who she made a career off of sleeping with rappers. That was her thing. Is being with rappers and you know like NBA players, you know the the stereotypical stuff. And she would go on podcasts, radio shows, and she would talk publicly about you know the encounters that she had with certain rappers. Uh, she would talk about how you know Lil Wayne's um, you know Lil Wayne's privates was like this you know it was like a it was like dealing with a really skinny pencil. That was one thing that, you know, she used to say. So, like, these types of things would always come up. And it was always funny. It was jokes like, ha, ha, uh, you know, ha, 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 talking about these rappers and how they can't get it down, even though they make the music that they make. Same thing with the athletes, like, ha, 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 it's all fun and jokes and games. You know, let's, you know, go ahead and publicly shame these rappers and these entertainers and these athletes and whatnot. And no one had a word to say, right? So, you know, I just want to make note of the double standard, because if the shoe is reversed and a man is publicly speaking on a woman's weak sex game or her smelly box or her her non wet box or anything of that nature, uh, he's going to get backlash uh, and there's going to be backlash for, you know, uh, he might get called a body shamer. You know, he might get called a misogynist. He might get called a sexist, you know, whatever the case may be. If the shoe is on the other foot and there's a guy on a podcast talking about a woman's weak sex game and the woman don't even have to be famous. She can be some private chick. Um, we don't keep the same energy. But when it's a dude, it's all fun and jokes and it's ha ha's and key keys and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the double standard is unfortunate. Uh, however, it is real. Uh, in my opinion, based on what I've seen. Uh, and I just kind of want to ensure that we are keeping that same energy there because from what I have seen, uh, we don't keep the same energy 
uh, it's, you know, bashing on the part of men who do it, but on the part of, you know, women who do it, it's like, it's funny. It's almost like a joke. And you know, the theory that I have, right, is, um, you know, if you want to be able to, if you want to be able to throw somebody's name through the mud, if you want to kind of throw dirt on somebody's name, um, if they are, a, if they're a straight man or a white person, no one's really going to give you flack. Uh, because I guess it's perceived that, you know, straight men and white people have had, have kind of had their go at it for so long that now it's socially acceptable to talk bad about them because they've been able to kind of benefit off of a male dominated, you know, heterosexual patriarchy for so long. So now that we are in the era of social justice, we can talk about these people and it's okay. No one's going to say anything. So I, I feel like there's some of that going on here where because Ray Shrimmer is a straight male, you know, it's kind of going to be jokes whenever you have people like her going at him, embarrassing him publicly over what their encounter was like. Um, if the shoe was on the other foot, I feel like if Ray, if he, if Sway Lee was doing that, talking about her, I feel like there would be a whole bunch of people getting on social media and podcasts talking about how Sway Lee was being, you know, whatever, uh, hetero, uh, 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 you know, sexist, misogynistic, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, my general point with the whole thing is let's just keep the same energy, please. Yeah, and you speaking to the, the you know, the double standard is, it's kind of like, it's, uh, it's the same thing that we were talking about in the last one, where the girl was basically using um, manipulation tactics in order to guilt people into behaving how she wants them to behave. So what the social justice mob would do in the scenario that you gave is they, they would guilt him into making him feel bad about stuff that she would have done her damn self. Mm -hmm. So they, it's a manipulation tactic for sure, uh, you know, socially. And that's why social justice, we always talk about it damn near every week. Yeah. And the reason being is it's a social, that's a social manipulation tactic. It's the same thing that the women uh, the, that the girl was talking about in the last video that she uses in order to get people to to acquiesce to her demands. Yeah. And so the social justice stuff, that's why it's, that's what it's doing in, in, the, in the macro, because they're doing that to everybody, basically bullying us and shaming us into not calling it what it is. Hey, sorry, I personally don't have a preference for women that are overweight. She was overweight, so I didn't want to deal with it. That's that guy's business. Oh, right. well, you can't, you're shaming her. You're shaming her. How am I shaming her? <laughs> and so, and but what, what that has done, man, is that it's not really working on the people that were already living their lives, but it's definitely working on a new wave. Like you said, yeah. the ones that grew up with the phones in their hand. Yeah. So that is definitely taking its toll on them. We'll see what the ramifications look like later. But this girl here, as far as her uh, attempting to shame him, um, it's not going it, to, it, it's just, it's common thoughtery. And so, um, she, listen, man, these women that live these types of lives are out for, they're like the Joker. <laughs> there's no purpose to what they're doing. They want money, but there's really no purpose to what they're doing. They just, they just want to see the world burn. They just yeah. want to see it. What, so what's your weakness? Just like the last girl. What's your weakness? So I can fuck it up. <laughs> the weakness. Oh, that's what you don't like? Hmm. You don't like, you, you're a jealous guy, huh? You don't like it when I talk to other men, huh? I'm going to find a way to be sneaky around you so now you can see me talking to other men. Now you're trying to get through my phone. Got your ass. Yeah. It's a manipulation. It's a game. No, nah, they ain't thinking that far ahead, bro. They're playing chess. Yeah. And they have to because we're the men. Oh, men are funny. Women aren't. Men play better at basketball. Women don't. Women, are, oh, so you 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 so masculine, masculine. Men are better than women, right, all the time. What do you think they feel? So how do you think they're going to level the playing field, bro? So the way that they have to level the playing field is by attacking our ego, is by attacking our insecurities. 
And so, again, man, the not too high, not too low. If Mr. Sway Lee is not too high, not too low, these comments just roll straight off of his back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah, they roll straight off his back because who is she? You know? Yeah, some, some, something that I sla- I don't even remember this girl. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, man, you don't remember, you don't remember me? I was, girl, I'm everywhere. And my my security people just be bringing people to me. You ain't nothing, you ain't nobody special. So this, this woman here knows that she's not something special. That's why she's got a name drop. That's why she's got it's the insecurities that live within her that makes her try to exploit someone else. So whenever I see these hurt people attempting to try to hurt other people, it is a sad thing to see, honestly. And what we've been speaking about earlier is that there's actually a growing populace of these women uh, and the re- and none of some of them even aren't even hurt they're attempting to still be this way even though they're not hurt like the exactly. girls that are out there doing. And, and that's what i'm talking about yeah and so they got they got our generation or they and 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 seceding ones sagging our pants selling drugs in the street shooting our own people acting like mad people Everything that comes on a, on a radio, whether it's whoever owns it or not, it's the, it's the same thing that we're saying every song is perpetuating the same foolishness that we've been given. So the men are out here doing the madness. That's why we have, we're struggling with incarceration rates and all this other stuff because, well, hell, this is how you be a man. So even if there was a boy that was raised the right way, had no business of even doing that, now he's out here with a pocket full of stones because he's trying to keep up with the Joneses. And so now he's out here trying to do whatever, whatever. Now he's getting bam. Now he's doing, you know, 25 to life. And he was raised well. And so now these girls are getting the same back end treatment. So we was out here banging and stuff like that. Now they're out here super thotting it up. And so this is this is the, the other side. This is the women's form of mind control that's under on full display right now. And so now there's girls out there that were raised right. That feel like they got to go out there and manipulate and, and try to get a man to trick off. Yes. And so I've met like, them. Yeah. And it's like, hey man, it, it might have been some girls that was on the fringe, you know, wholesome, wholesome little thottish. But with hot girl summer and anthems, oh, you know, and uh, you know, all these anthems banging that they don't deal with men and let's just take his money, girl. Yeah, if she was on the fringe, well, hell, you know, she might be teetering over on the wrong side now. And so, yeah, that's why the statistics and stats are growing because it's not like you know we got parents out there that aren't really trying. They're still out. Uh, they're still dual parent households or single ones where the parents are really trying their best to raise the right kind of kids. But it's madness of a put out in the world where they're just getting manipulated by their peers and whatever is going on on TikToks and Instagrams. <laughs> And so, and so, yeah, so this woman here, genuine reflection, genuine reflection of, of today's uh, today's uh, mainstream woman. And this girl here, that's why that's why she's crop looking like this, because this is like, man, if I seen this girl picture somewhere and it's like swipe left, swipe right. It's like what? Which direction is no. <laughs> and then I'm swiping that direction. Because who they'll is, just bring it, they'll bring it back on your profile. <laughs> they'll bring it back somehow. They'll just they'll just circle back around. Like, how? Like, how did this get back on here? Yeah. I've been on here this long. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like it, no, for real. Like, and that that's that was the point that I was trying to make in the previous the, on the previous topic was yeah. this is a this is something that extends far beyond. Yeah what you would describe as the prototypical uh, uh, upbringing or environment of the person who you would think would be subjected to this kind of stuff. And it's just becoming more, to use the word that you use, mainstream. Mm -hmm. Like this is just the general behavior of everything and everybody. Like it's just, this is just the way it goes. Um, and, and, And so the only thing that I've been saying, and I'll continue to say it, is as a society, if we decide collectively that we're okay with that, then it is what it is. But what I'm hearing is a lot of complaining that we don't like this. So if that's the case, 
then the individuals who are doing the complaining have to, have to understand the responsibility that they play and why chicks like this feel emboldened enough to, you know, throw this guy out there on front street like that. Cause you know, I, for, look, and just to kind of bring it back to what you were just saying, hmm. I would not be surprised one bit if she grew up with a, with two parents, if she grew up in a two parent household where both of her parents been married for 40 years, you know, and she went through all her school, she might be college educated. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter. Um, people are at the mercy of the social media and the, you know, I guess the entertainment machine. Yeah, and it's yeah. so, it's so, it's so ubiquitous. You can't escape it. Mm -hmm. So unless you were, unless you were taught some of the principles that would enable you to exercise good judgment, you're not going to be powerful enough to sidestep that. You're going to fall right in line and conform. Uh, conformity is the big thing. And it's so interesting because there was a generation, you know, it's like my older brother's generation. That was the generation of nonconformity, of going out of your way to not do what everybody else is doing. And I feel like we reverted back to conformity where everyone is doing everything that they're seeing. So it's like, oh, this is trending. Let me make my version of this video. This is doing this or let me do my version of that. And mm -hmm. it trickles down into the madness when it comes to this type of behavior. It's like, well, you know, even though I grew up not a part of this, I'm still going to fall in line with, you know, the club scene and the NBA all-star scene. I'm going to get all my tattoos. I'm probably going to get my, my ass surgeries and I'm going to, you know, do all of that kind of stuff. And I'm going to live in that type of lifestyle and I'm going to have run-ins with these rappers. And when I get treated the same way that these rappers treat every other female, now I'm going to exercise the license to talk about it publicly and make it seem like he's the one who's bad, who looks bad. And I'm the one who came out looking like the victor. As if both individuals involved didn't lose. Exactly. So, um, it, you know, I just kind of wanted to put this out there. I don't even really know if there's much more meat on it. I just kind of wanted to say to keep the same energy uh, because the double standard is is something that I feel like, well, if we're all in this and we're all throwing feces at each other's faces, if someone throws feces at me, then I want to be able to throw feces back. And right now, it's like the feces has only been thrown one way. So I'm just letting y'all know that um, the world that I live in, the door swings both ways. So the second I get a pile of feces thrown at me, you can expect a pile of feces getting thrown right back. Yeah, and, um, and to speak on what you was saying as far as, like, uh, the progenitating behaviors. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, yes, yesterday I'm online and I'm looking at posts. I saw two different posts from two different women and they were complaining about how, how zesty or how sassy, uh, some of the men are on the, on, on the apps, you know, when they're dancing and stuff or when they're doing other things. And they were basically like, oh, you know, be a man kind of thing. And it's it's too late and <laughs> it's too late for that and so the and the reason being is we weren't the people liking those posts now so when those guys are out there being super zesty and super sassy when they're dancing like that i'm sure there's a population of men who enjoy this fine but the overwhelming majority of it is coming from women they're the ones laughing at these jokes where the guy's putting a wig on and leggings and all doing all this other stuff. And then you're wondering why other men aren't doing it. So it's the same thing. It's like how we talked about, about the thoughtish behavior. Hey, we can't complain about the thoughtish behavior if we're out here liking the pictures. Right. And so now we're creating a way. And now you want to complain that there's not wholesome women. Stop liking the thought pictures. <laughs> And so the same thing for these women out here that may feel some type of way, like, damn, where are the like men men at though? Cause you're, you're, you're shaking your hips better than me at this point. I don't want that. Oh no, you don't. It's so wild, bro. Yeah. They, want, they want a man, man, but at the same time, they want them to be emotional and they want them to be all this duck stuff. No, you don't want a duck. 
And I don't know where you got all this stuff that you want to duck, but that's not what your intuition is telling you. And your intuition is telling you that I don't want my ad, my man, shit, you know, rolling his ass in a circle. I don't know why that's not appealing to me as a woman, but it's a turnoff. Oh, really? So then you want that other stuff that comes with that. And so those are the things that you would also call toxic. Yes. And so the madness of which that they've been, they've been filtered these lines of thought that are not congruent. You can't even string them together. As soon as you start stringing them together, they fall apart. So it's like, hey, how are you going to get across this bridge if none of these things are stringing together? So you're going to be stuck in one spot all the time trying to look for this unicorn man who can cry at a ballet and and, and strangle a bear. Yeah. And then make right. a quarter, uh, make millions of dollars. Right. So good luck finding that guy. Yeah. Right. And it doesn't want you to cook or clean either. <laughs> so <laughs> or the, the gladiator Viking man you're looking for, uh, that's also sensitive. Yeah. In touch with his emotions. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's no, there, it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right, man. So the double standards, as we talked about, they go both ways. And as, as we've seen in this discussion here, that women have their corresponding foolishness that they've bought into. Because we be talking about the men's side too, but hell, they've clearly bought into a, a foolish rhetoric themselves and a, a one that doesn't benefit them at all. So, yeah, yeah, um, I, I hear you, and I'm with you. I agree. Um, it's just you know, it, it's it's hilarious, man. I just kind of I find it to be funny. You know, the, this I, I I remember one time I was working, and this will be the last thing I say. I was uh, back before the pandemic when I was actually physically at my office and I would talk to one of the girls who I work with because, uh, you know, we would get into conversations like this. And I kind of asked her one day because she was talking about, you know, BS with men and women and blah, blah, blah. And woe is me. I can't, you know, I can't find this and that. And, da, 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 da. and so I was like, well, you know, you, you buy into all of this feminism stuff. Like you're, you're a staunch feminist. And yet you're wondering why you're experiencing difficulties. And I was like, don't you realize how much of a fallacy, uh, you know, at least the modern feminism actually is? Because I asked her, I asked her, I asked her, okay, a answer me these questions straight up. Uh, do you feel as though a guy should approach you? She was like, yeah. I was like, do you feel as though a guy should assert himself? And like, if you're out in a, if you're out in a crowded area, you see a guy and you and you like him. And, and, you know, whose responsibility it is, is it to approach the other person and make that in, initial interaction? She was like, oh, he's supposed to do that. I was like, okay, so it's the guy's job to approach you. It's the guy's job to assert. Uh, do you have an expectation that the guy pays for your dates? Yeah. And I was like, okay, do you have an expectation that the guy, um, you know, has decent manners about him? Is some kind of chivalrous holds the door open, pays you compliments, all of that good stuff. Do you have that expectation? She's like, well, yeah. And I was like, well, then why do you subscribe to so much feminism rhetoric when feminism rhetoric supposedly is about equitability? Because if it was truly about equitability, then you would do those same things at the same rate that men do. But clearly you don't believe in that because you still think that men should be doing all of that stuff. So it really has nothing to do with what's equitable and it has everything to do with you wanting what you want, but you still being able to retain all of the things that benefit you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so, you know, that's what a lot of this stuff is about here. These double standards, like we just want what we want and we want to not have to deal with the ramification. Like everything has good and bad parts. So if you want what you want, you're going to have to you're going to have to deal with all of the negative ancillary parts that come along with that. You can't just get everything you want and not deal with the bad stuff. That's mm -hmm. when you start crying about double standards. And that's what we all do. You know, males and females do that. I feel like females do it more because as you just outlined, you get these women who talk about how they want the perfect archetype of a man. And generally speaking, when they get the man who is it, who has all the aspects that they complain about, when it comes to the double standard, they find themselves intrinsically unattractive to them.
because at the end of the day, those guys tend to not be masculine and all the other things that you inherently exactly. want more or the most. Exactly. But, you know, the, you know, the, the, the double standards are all over the place. I just find them hilarious. Um, and yeah, it is what it is. Um, you know, I, I, I'm just somebody who lives outside that bubble. So, uh, I'm all about the same energy. I'm, I, I don't really buy into the idea that, you know, like I said, you can throw feces at my face, but then I can't throw feces back. We going to be some feces throwing people out here. If that's the case, <laughs> like that's just how I see it. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like you said, Sway Lee ain't tripping. He got 10, 20 other fitness models and Instagram thoughts in his rotation. So he ain't tripping about this one. Exactly. You got something to say about him on some, you know, podcast. He's just a so, hater. Yeah. 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 Uh, she's probably just mad because she didn't jump to number one in his playlist. You know and so she's is? acting out because she ain't number one in the playlist. But it is what it is, man. Shots out to Sway Lee, man. I used to like some of the Ray Shrimmer songs from back in the day. I don't really know yeah. what happened yeah. uh, with Ray yeah. Shrimmer. From, but their early stuff used to be slapping. So I don't know um, why, too. It was like, damn, this shit fire. It's like low-key fire, and then it grows on you even more. And it's like, man, this, these jits are all right, man. Yeah, I, I think it mostly has something to do with... uh. Mike Will? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was mostly him. I think he was the reason why. Nah, the beats were stupid, bro. Yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that guy was out of control. Mm -hmm. um, but that'll go. That'll do it for this week, man. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. As usual, man, it's all about supporting logical content. Uh, if you like this video, if you appreciated the content or the commentary in this video, uh, do hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel so you can get notifications whenever new content is published to the channel. Certainly appreciate it. Uh, you can follow the Conscious Approach page on Instagram at Con Approach, C O N A P P R O A C H. And then, you know, we also post the videos to other channels as well, mainly on Facebook. So if you happen to be watching this video on that, uh, like the page, but also share the video as well. Comment wherever you're seeing this video. We certainly appreciate it. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, you can also check out all the relevant links in the description of this and every other video. So, um, you can find me on Instagram at JVWens, J-V-W-I-N-S. Certainly appreciate the support on every other social channel as well, JVWens, J-V-W-I-N-S. Until the next time, please continue to support logical content. Yes, sir. And the name is Dogon SS. And you can find me on Instagram at Dogon underscore SS and on YouTube at Dogon SS or any other social media platform. All right. Just Dogon underscore SS. I'm there lurking somewhere. All right. Go ahead and subscribe, follow, whatever it is that's going on. I'll likely do it back. All right. Uh, if I still get on the app. <laughs> so if it's, Twitter, <laughs> if it's Twitter, send it though. I get on that every three months. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I only look at it when I get notifications. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man, just keep it calm, man. Keep it chill, keep it play, and don't be too high, don't be too low, man. Because guess what, guys? Today we had a good example of how people can use that against you. All right? Yeah, so I'm not just saying that to blow smoke, man. So uh, keep it even kill, man, and don't let nobody get you off your pivot, bro. Okay. Yeah, those are all facts, man. And until the next time, we're gonna sign off until we get on to the next video, man. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you later. <laughs>